Welcome to Tales of Blue, where today I'm joined by a former player that in the current game would be clearly lauded as one of our own after growing up within a stone's throw of Main Road. Jason Beckford. How are you doing, Jason? Do well, mate. Thanks. Thanks for the, the invite. So, yeah, uh, doing really well. Thank you. Great stuff. So, Moss Side born. What's a young Jason Beckford's earliest footballing memories? Um, well, Listen, I just as always, just without being horrible, just a little correction there back. And I am, um, I'm actually a long sight boy. I know, you know, Wikipedia, as people see, you know, they always see sources by side, but I'm actually a long sight boy, which isn't far away, but um, yeah, long, long sight. But um, so, but um, in terms of my earliest memory, my earliest memory of football is uh, 1976 FA Cup final. Man United versus Southampton. And I think it was Bobby Stokes that scored the winner um, against United that year. So that's my, my earliest, earliest memory of, of football, I think, uh, 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 as far as I can remember. Which players would you pretend to be growing up playing football? Um, well, listen, I... Want to do that, and it's not that as a opinion, you know, you're red or blue. And unfortunately, for some people, I know it's like Nicky Butt was a City fan and he played for United. You know, I, I grew up as a lot of me, my family was United, so I grew up, um, you know, as a, as, as a United fan, to, to be honest. But, um, but as I say, my early memories, I would, you know, I'd be like, you know, Stevie Coppel. He'd be one of my, my Stuart Pearson. I would be pretending to be him. Um, uh, you know, Lou Macari was, you know, one of me, you know, one of the people that I used to, you know, want to pretend to be because Lou, Lou was one of those. I, um, uh, black, red, red, um, red and white top. Um, Lou Macari used to roll his over and it used to just be red and black. He, Um, I think it was 77 they bought me United get after the um, you know the FA Cup final so yeah you eventually progressed the main road version junior ranks via City's nursery team Blue Star how difficult was it back then to make the progression yeah. to the main road from sort of that level of football I'm sure there was a lot of competition for places yeah yeah well you know as, as at the time as you know you know City were, were starting to gain a, quite a good reputation for themselves with regards to young players and, and bringing them through. Um, some, you know, some of that was by design, some of that was by necessity, as you know, you know, obviously maybe they didn't have the, the, the money that, that um, you know, their neighbours um, have all the time. But, um, but yeah, I, it was, um, I, I didn't really think much about it, to be quite honest, Mark. I mean, all, I just loved football as a kid. Loved football as a kid and Played for Manchester Boys as a, a ten-year-old with, you know, uh, Andy Inchcliffe. You know, we played. Um, uh, and our Blue Star team, it's uh, Paul Warhurst, Gary Speed. Um, there's a few. So I didn't really think. I, I really didn't know how good I was, Mark. And I'm just, I am, I'm just being really honest about that. I didn't really know how good I was until, you know, uh, probably. I just played because I just loved it, and uh, and until I think it was when there's a few clubs started to come in for him. I think United coming for him was about 12, 13, and obviously City. I've been at City since I was eleven, so um, I, I, I it was only then that I started thinking, oh well, I'm, you know, I'm just not bad then, you know what I mean? So, but I always wanted to stay at City because City had always looked after me from. from a, like I say, eleven years old, so they always looked after me, looked after my mum, my dad. I mean, I, I don't think I bought a pair of boots, but from from I was eleven years old, I never bought a pair of boots again. You know, so that was, you know, that it was that that's what it was like. I I didn't think much about the competition or anything like that. Although, of course, there was lots of competition, but I never worried about. It. I just I just went and played because I just loved it. What was like early life like at City for a sort of early eighties at City apprentice, and how were you treated by the more? senior first team players at the time 
Um, yeah, listen, again, um, well, as you know, my older brother was at the City as well at the time, so he just signed as a young professional. So I've been going into City from 11 years old and going for my holidays, and then when I signed schoolboy forms from as a 14-year-old, going in as well. So I was pretty familiar, and everybody was pretty familiar with me when I first went there. So I was, and I'd just come from um, the National School, which was Lillyshaw, which was, I don't know if you remember that, Mark, but that was the first year of the, they used to call it the Bobby Robson School of Excellence. But out of that was born, um, you know, the academies that you see now, it was born out of that national school um, idea. So I just come from, from Lillyshaw, having played for England in the 15s, England in the 16s. So um, when I got to City at 16 years old, like, um, you know, all, everybody was, you know, I was quite familiar with everybody. Well, everybody was brilliant with me, you know, all those lads. Um, as I said, you know, my boot, as a boot boy, I would, you know, I used to do Clive Wilson's boots, uh, Perry Suckling, um, Eric Nixon, uh, Alex Williams. And obviously I had Mick as well. And I had Paul Simpson. Um, and as I say, all, all, you know, they were brilliant with me. Um, but, you know, there was, you know, there was always one or two. I mean, I know Steve on the, uh, he's on the, the chat quite a bit and everything as well. Uh, Steve Kinsey. I mean, Steve may, he may or may not remember this, but I mean, Steve was all right. No problems with Steve. But I remember he may have fell out of favour or something like that. And um, he, he may, as I say, he may remember, he may have fell, fell out of favour. And what happened was he ended up coming out to train with us as a youth team. So he came trained with us. And he, he obviously it wasn't, you know, obviously not happy with it <laughs> and um, I remember him you know one or two nasty challenges he was putting in uh, one or two of our lads and uh, <laughs> I remember Tony Buck he was our UT coach the boat that made me stop in practice and basically in the face of Steve Kids he's saying Listen, if you want to if you want to sort someone out you can sort me out <laughs> so but like I say on the, on the whole you know Early days at City there was, was always good and obviously with me with my mate Lakey and everything obviously we were best mates so it was all good all good. good. So who from the youth set up management would you simply not mess with? From the youth from the youth centre. Um the management, oh, the management team. In the management team, oh um <laughs> well Tony Buck. You just didn't get on the wrong side of him. You know, straight, straight shooter. Um, Glyn Pardo was kind of like, you know, was this, I, I'd say was, they were really good fall for each other. You know, Skip was very hard, very harsh on us. And, you know, it was kind of his way the highway. Glyn was the one to be, you know, he put his arm around you a little bit and say, listen, you know, if Skip wasn't hard on you, you know, he, he, you know, he, he if he doesn't say anything to you, you're in trouble. So the fact that he was having a go at you means that you had a chance, you know. Um, Tony Buck, for sure, you wouldn't mess about with. My manager at the time, when I first went there, said he was Billy McNeil. Definitely not to be trifled with Big Mick. Uh, but so big, um, Billy McNeil. Um, yeah, big man and just... Yeah, he, he kind of, when he came in the room, he kind of cowered and kind of like bowed your head a little bit, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, definitely, you know, those two. I'm going to bring a question forward here. As you mentioned, Tony Book, um, you may not remember this, but where was the worst time Jason Beckford impression of Tony Book performed? <laughs> the worst, sorry, give me that one again. The worst time Jason Beckford impression of Tony Book. My research tells me you, you were quite a Tony Book impressionist. You might have got caught out with it on an aeroplane. Oh, <laughs> well, listen, I got I got caught a few times, well, a couple of times, you know, because the lads are do me. So, I, you know, I, again, he did, he did set much to egg me on, like, you know, the lads be going, you know, make it golden, you know, do it. So, I mean, I remember once doing it, I did it once on, um, it, as an apprentice, I, I, I did it, and he was outside the door, and like he, the lads just, the lads killed me. Um, as you say, once um, on the aeroplane, I think I can't remember when we were in Australia, we were going to Australia, or it was when we were coming back from Hong Hong Kong or somewhere like when Howard Kennel was around, 
And Adrian Eve used to always, he, he used to always, always, because we used to sit next, next to each other, um, change, he'd say, he'd get, me, he'd get me going and get me to do it. And um, yeah, so I probably, one of, one of those two times, Skip always, he always took it in good heart because at the end of the day, I, he knew I had a lot of respect for him. I had the utmost respect for him. And, you know, a player, so, you know, and I, I mean, living out the game through him. So, he was always good with me, Skip. Was there a youth team mate or player at the time, Jason, that you surprised that didn't go on to have a career in the game? We probably a member of a youth team who, who didn't make the first team or go on to have a career? Um, good question. Um, I mean... This might sound really horrible, and I don't really, I don't mean it to be, Mark. I really don't. I mean, there's some that surprised me, um, but you know, I'm just trying to get ahead. And in terms of our youth team, my first year, obviously my first year, um, Andy Inchcliffe was in the youth team then, obviously Paul Lake. Um, what I mean, one one that comes to mind, that I think you know, would have done if he didn't have injuries and stuff. You know, um, like called Paul Kelly. I don't remember Paul Kelly. Um, Cal was a good, good little player. Um, but, you know, there's one or two, you know, one or two people that I did know as as youth team players. I mean, I was end up being a pro at the time, and that we youth team players end up having careers. But, you know, it did, did surprise me, but I keep that to myself. <laughs> so what Paul if, Kelly, sure. Go on. So what if if any mischief did the youth team lads get up to? Who were the ringleaders? And do you recall a time when maybe somebody had overstepped the mark? Ooh. Uh, um yeah, good question. So in terms of um youth team, so it, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but at the time the youth team was to by TS span over two years so we'd all be trained we'd all change in the the youth team just so you'd have the youth team players in there and then you'd have the likes of you know paul molden you know late you know lake before he went into the first team and dave white um and the inch obviously again before they went to the youth team so um, in terms of mischievousness, um, Paul Molden was the most, he, he just, he, he just, it'd be a pain really, it was just so mischievous, you know, he, there was no natural light in the change rooms, and I'm sure even at the change rooms there on Main Road, there's no natural light there, so the lights are on, so what he used to do, he'd come in and kind of kick the door open, switch the lights off and boot a ball in there, and invariably it, it, it you know, he clips someone in the in, in the face or something. You know what I mean? Um, and then he'd run off. So it's the mischievousness. He he did that. But I do remember, and a, a few of the lads around the time would probably remember as well. Was the, was one lad that went past the mark and um, over the line was a lad called. Um, it'll, it'll come to me, but a, a lad that ended up playing for me when I was managing at semi pro level, a lad that called. Uh, Andy Thackeray. Now, yeah. Andy was a, a bit older than me. He's like a, a couple of years older than me. But um, again, was in the dressing room at that time when I was my first year. And was a, a, a lad there, a big centre half. He would have been in the, in the same year as Jamie Hoyland called. It'll come to me in a minute. But it, I remember we were all laughing and joking and stuff like that. And th this lad just, he ended up punching. Uh, and uh, put, he, he ended up punching Andy Thackeray, and it, it was it was it was just it, for nothing really, because we'd all just having the crack or whatnot. And he just he, he's a big lad, and he, he punched Andy Thackeray, and Andy Thackeray's two front teeth come through his top lip, and I mean, it was really it was really bad, and the, that that overstepped the mark, and I, re I remember that um, definitely. But his name will come to me um, later on, but. That was one way. Do you start to regularly perform during City's 86 87 Central League campaign and a great yeah. city with a mixture of youth team lads and senior lads performing? How did you feel yeah. that your career was progressing at City around that time? 
Well, you know what? I, I, I'd made a, I made it when I, when I came from Lily Shaw and everything, and I come to me apprenticeship. I'd, I'd signed a, a one year apprenticeship and a two year pro contract. So I'd already had that guaranteed to me. Um, and probably because I'd obviously I played for England and stuff as well. But that year, that season, that first year, that was at eight, six, eight, seven. Um, I, I don't, I was actually, I was actually supposed to make my debut that, um, that season, Mark. Um, and I would have made it around, I think it would have made it, it, it wouldn't have been that long after that I'd, I'd signed an apprenticeship. So I, it would have been around, I think, just after Christmas or something like that. And um, I, I just remember doing quite well in the, in the, in the reses, if you like. Because I'd only, I, I basically, I'd made that a bit of a target for myself. I said, okay, 16, my first year, I want to be at least a regular in the reses. Seven, you know, next year, my second year. I wanted to be, you know, I want to be banging on that first team. No, that, that was my, my plan. But the first team thing came a little bit earlier. Um, I was supposed to make my debut against Oxford, which would have been in the 87th season. And um, basically what happened, I was, I got pulled by the manager at the time. Um, I think it would have been Mel, Mel just, be, just before that. I, just Mel Major just coming at 87, I think he came. Yeah. And um, he, he, you know, he basically, well, he, actually, he didn't come to me. I came in on the Monday morning and um, Skip said to me, Tony Butler says, you train with the first team today. And I went, all right, okay. So, you know, we were doing this lineup thing and it turned out I was playing left wing. And I'm like, all right, so looks like I'm playing here because I think we're playing on the Wednesday or something like that. So, and I was, I, I literally, I was supposed to be taking a, um, I think Simo, I, I think I was supposed to be taking Simo's place, which for me would it was like a bit awkward anyway, because I love Simo. And and he's one of my favorite players, to be quite honest. So anyway, so um literally on the Monday I came training, so it looked like I was playing. And the and the, uh, the Tuesday came training again, we were doing set pieces and I was involved the eleven. And on the Wednesday, we were supposed to and those days, you know, we, you, you sometimes you come in on the the morning before um the game and do a few stride outs or whatever they used to call them. Um, so we came in that month, that uh, Wednesday morning and I was training with the U team again and I thought, what's going on here? I thought I, thought I was playing today and I'm, and Blimp just came to me and said, look, you, you're with us today. I'm like, so I said, I thought, what's, the, what's going on, Glenn? I thought I was playing. He went, don't worry about it, son. Just, just get your head down and just can't keep playing. So, um, so literally, I, 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 what apparently what happened? I think Simo had gone into the, the into the address into C Mel and kind of you know you can imagine tore a strip off him and Mel wasn't the strongest in the world. So um, the next minute I was back to him the 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 the, um, the, the youth team the reses. Um, so I didn't even end up making my debut then, Mark, until the following season. So when it which would have been the I said the 87, 88 season. So, um, but like I say, it should have been um, earlier. In fact, that's right. It would have been the it would have been the eighty seven eighty eight season. It would, it would have been early earlier. That's right. Yeah. You want to cast your mind back to a game? So this is the twentieth of January, nineteen eighty seven. So he's the Central League side, Pump Liverpool five nil, with both uh, both Beckford brothers on the score sheet. What well, what do you call of that? Thing? Yeah. Well, do you know? What, oh, I mean, mark it. <laughs> I can't believe you. You're right old stato, aren't you, mate? Um, mate, I, I tell <laughs> I you what, get out. I do get out. It was, yeah, definitely. Oh, well, let, let's hope so. Um, listen, mate, I, put it this way. I played centre forward that day, I think. I think actually, both of us played up front that day, me and Arkin. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and I scored... I think I scored two and our kids scored one. You may, you, you, I might be, I might be wrong there. Was that, was that right, Mark? That's right. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I scored two. He scored one. Um, um obviously, you, you know, you may know that that day Liverpool, they, they had a proper team out there. Garrett, you know, Craig Johnson, I think played. Um, you know, they had some, you know, they had some players that were playing and, it was even to this day, you know, like you say, quite a long time later. One of the biggest regrets, though, because we couldn't understand me and our kid that 
that's the first time me and our kid had actually played up front together. And if anybody knows, our kid was a you know a very good, you know, header of the ball and a good, you know, very good athlete and a good leaper and stuff. And you know, we were we were perfect. In fairness, we were kind of perfect for all for each other. And it was the only time we ever played up front together, man. And to this day, I I I, I scratch. We both of us we scratch our head and we say. I don't know how they never let us play together, together again and like that. And the only time we played together after that was when he, he was, obviously he was playing in the Central League as well. And they, they had him playing centre half a couple of times. We have to be good in the S. We played centre half. Um, but that's one of, you know what, because I haven't got many regrets in football, you know, because you know, things happen. But that was one of the ones where I think, you know what, I wish we'd have got the opportunity to play together more because I think it will, we, we warranted it, to be quite honest. Even more so after a performance like that one. Well, yeah, it, it, it's a strange one, Mark. <laughs> strange. Your, your good form continues, Jason, and you have to wait until 87-88 campaign. Around Eastern time, you're involved in the first team, earning a place on the bench in a 2-0 home win over Reading. How did and when did you find out you'd be involved? Um, I, again, it's always a late one there. So, you know, probably I, being honest, don't really remember the game, um, you know, very, very much. Um, but I, I mean, obviously, I remember my debut and everything, but I don't remember the Reading game to be quite honest. With me, but you know, I, I, I've been, as you, as you probably know, I was knocking on the door for a, a while now, if you like, because you know, I was kind of playing, you know, I was. I, but in the rest and stuff like that. And to be honest, I, I thought I probably should have been playing a lot earlier than, than what that I was, than earlier than what I was. The debut comes the week later at Middlesbrough. Uh, how did it finally feel to right. be starting in the first team? Yeah, so, so you know, that was, you know, that that was exciting, obviously, being, you know, being, you know, your first team debut and everything. And the likes of Paul Stewart, as you know, at the time was at the club and then, um, Neil McNabb, um, you know, Neil he was, you know, again, he's one of my favourite people, you know, um, Neil McNabb, he's always very good to us young lads, you know, um, all those lads, you know, that all that broke through the likes of Andy Inch, Whitey, Brighty, you know, Red Reddles probably was the first one to break through, really. Um, and then obviously Lakey and Neil was always brilliant with us. Uh, Paul Molden obviously was a lot along that, but, you know, a bit older than me. So I was the youngest out of that if you like that group. Um, so, you know, it, it was it was great to finally get to get to play. And, um, you know, the, for what I can remember, it, you know, it went all right. A main road debut arrives the following week and you retain your place for the remaining five games of that season. So from a personal point of view, you must have been pleased that that's yeah. how you're progressing. Yeah, I mean, again, Mark, um, I've, I've got to be honest, I, I did think that, you know what, um, I, I st you know, stayed in the team to the end of the, the season, um, thought I performed, you know, quite well. Um, I got a new contract at the end of that season as well. Um, I signed a new four-year contract. So I kind of thought, right, you know, I'm, I'm going to be starting next year. Um, and obviously the competition for places, but um, you know, again, was just in and around it, but you know, was very surprised, to be quite honest. It was you didn't appear again until the following October, Jason, in the 88 89 campaign. That's what, but, um, what, what were the reasons? Yeah. That it just was you were injured early season, or was it just not, not around? Well, but you know what, I think. Again, it, 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 what you got to understand, I mean, I'm sure you understand this, but, you know, football's about opinions, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the game was just beginning to change then. When I say the, the game was beginning to change, it just started to change from wingers to wide midfield players, if you like. And, and I remember Peter Barnes being, you know, one of the guys that was, when he came back for his second spell at Man City, I remember saying to me... Always saying to me, you know what, you know, just keep taking people on, and you know, 
you know, get you know, get to the byline. And so they were always encouraging me. Um, but then it, it, you know, the, the, that that season, that eighty-eight season, eighty-nine season, you know, Mel was one of those where he was very, I would say, he was, he was kind of defensive coach, if you like, and was very and liked liked Dave um, Dave White, if you like. He, he liked people. He liked wide midfield players instead of wingers to be part of it. So it was he was basically became a bit of an, um, a, 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 a kind of a philosophy thing. So he, he preferred um, the likes of, um, you know, Dave um, or, or um, when he came, like a Nigel Clegg on, um, because they were more like wide field players and, you know, not kind of wingers like I was. I, I've got, you know, um, or, or more at- attacking minded, if you like. So, um, so I've got to be honest, I was frustrated, was really frustrated at, at that time. Um, and we asked how things were going. So to not to finish the last season playing and then not yet get in was really so, so, Can you hear me, mate? Yeah, I can hear you again now. I just lost you a little bit there. Sorry, did you did you get that answer? Sorry. Yeah, yeah I got that. It's a brilliant I said, Yeah, I just lost you for a little bit, but I've got the end there. So your first City goal arrives at Swindon. Sorry. The vital one in a 2-1 win. <laughs> now your memories of that one. <laughs> yeah, just a tap in, really. I think Lakey got to the byline, crossed it. I think why he edited it and, and the, yeah, I, I just kind of made sure he got over the line because I wasn't sure it was going to get it because somebody was just about to kick off. Uh, I think someone was going to be about to kick off the line, so I just made sure it was like, it's, well, the easiest goal I ever scored in your life, mate. So, oh. so yeah, but it was nice to score my first goal for City, if you like. Um, it was, and uh, early, earlier on in the game as well, I, I kind of made the first goal as well. I was happy, you know, we had a, I had a, I had a decent game that, that day. I always, funny story about that as well, was about, uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> that that weekend was like a bit of a big weekend for me anyway, because obviously I, I was playing, but before we got on the coach to go to Swindon on the Friday, the day before, I had my driving test, and all the lads knew. So I thought, you know, I can't, I can't fail my driving test and then go on this bus all the way to Swindon. I just couldn't, live, I wouldn't live it down. So I passed my test. Obviously, we had the game, and you know, have a decent game, and involved in both goals. So on the way home, uh, now we get back to Manchester, and then Neil McNabb like just throws me. He says, "Here you go," and he throws me his keys, and I'm like, "What? What? What's? What's this?" And he went, "You're driving us tonight," and I'm like, <laughs> that's so I end up being the what they call these days the designated driver because I didn't drink those days anyway. I had to be the designated driver for him, Mark C. Graves. Who else came out with us? I can't remember who else was out. But definitely those two. And I ended up having to drive them around while they were getting getting uh, seamlessly drunk. So, yeah. So, how would you describe your relationship with Mel Mation and Jimmy Frizzell that season? That season, um, Frizz, I've got to be honest, Frizz always liked me. Frizz always liked me as a player. He would um, he, he would be on my case, though. He, you know, he, he, he'd always be on my case about, you know, look at you, all that ability you've got, and blah, blah, blah. It, you know, it, just the way I was, him and Tony Buck used to think that I would, they, they wanted me to be a bit more aggressive, if that made sense, Mark. So, it, I mean, that, that kind of generation, they wanted me to be me, me to be beating people up more, you know, and I'm like, that, that really wasn't my game. You know, my game was more of a, you know, I was a, I was a dribbler and, you know, I, I could pass it. You know, I wasn't bad both sides, the, you know, um, for the ball. But uh, Mel really wanted, Mel wanted a, a midfield player. He wanted a wide midfield player and I wasn't a, a wide midfield player. So with, with Mel, I, I, I've got to be honest, and, I, you know, I didn't really, I didn't speak to him that much. Um, uh, because, you know, my relationship was as such that I didn't really 
I didn't, I didn't fancy him. He's that kind of person where I thought he was, um, where, where Frizzy does tell you how it is, you know, it, it, you know, Mel would be one of these, like, depending on what, how it went on, sat, on the Saturday or something like that, or if you, you didn't think you played very well, he'd ignore you and, and walk past you, wouldn't even say morning. So I, I had no time for that. And, you know, and, um, you know, I didn't really have much time for him. But with appearances again limited as City return to the first division, you do get a brief yeah. run in the memorable 5 1 Derby Day victory, replacing your good friend Paul Lake. What do you recall of that afternoon, Jason, the atmosphere and the buzz after the game? Well, you know what, and maybe people don't remember, but you will probably remember, Mark. But um, I remember the game so as if it was yesterday because. The, the reason I remember it so much was that the, the when you know when they had the the pitch invasion. It was quite early into the game, wasn't it? Early in in the game, and to be quite honest, it was the best thing that could have happened for us. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm not condoning any kind of violence or whatever that like is. But it was the best thing that could have happened to us because I don't know if you remember, but when the game started, and I think the pitch invasion was early first ten minutes. I don't think we'd actually touched the ball, mm -hmm. Mark. <laughs> literally hadn't touched the ball. They just they just bounced it around us and stuff, you know. So um so I think what the pitch invasion did, it kind of obviously it, it broke their momentum, but it enabled us to just settle down a little bit and helped us to regroup. And then obviously as people know, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So a change of manager also during that season with Howard Kendall joining the club mm -hmm. and a high turnover yeah. of players. Did you have any direct yeah. contact with Howard over your future? How was it? Was it laid out that you, you needed to move on or you could have stayed and fight for your place, maybe? Well, and I always say this, Mark. I mean, my career at City could have been different if he stayed. Because if you remember, and it, uh, lots of people who remember City, though, that we, we were young, we're a young team, a uh, young side. And excuse me, um, we were a young side that um, unfortunately didn't have the, the same experienced players, um, you, you know, um, that uh, that could, they did help us, don't get me wrong, but maybe not at the level that United had at that time. But our young players, you know, were, were better than United. You know, we, we, you know, we beat them regularly in youth set up, reses, whatever it was. So it's just at that time, we, we needed that experience. So I know some people didn't like it when, you know, the likes of the old ex-Everton connection came in, like Reedy, Inchi, um, Alan Harper, you know, Bertie, um, you know, Wayne Clark, Neil Poynton, uh, Mark Ward, you know, all those guys came in. But we we needed them, Mark, because we needed them because they were, they were seasoned professionals. They, they, they played at the highest level. And when they came in, and all those lads will tell you, myself, Lakey, Inchi, um, Redo, training just went up another level because we, it just, it, everybody's game just rose a level because the expectation was there, the, the demands were there. So when, so I, I always thought it was good. And so what happened is when, when Howard came, he said to me, he sat me down and said, look, he actually gave me a new, I don't know, he actually gave me a new contract. He gave me a new contract, he gave me a rise and said, look, we need to get through this period here now. He says, you'll be involved. You may not be involved, but I, I am grooming you. You will, play, you will play, but we need to get through this season. He said, Adrian Heath, Inch isn't going to be playing another, you know, another season or whatever it is. You know, he's coming to the end of his, his career and everything, and I'm grooming you to be able to play, play in that position, you know, when, you know, he's finished. He said, of um so he pulled me in and he said, look, I've just turned down 250 grand from you from Derby County. Who, and uh, I think it was Alan, Alan um, not, um, Cox was the manager then, I think he was. And he says, so again, Ma, at the time, 250 grand is a lot of money. And, and they're, they're buying potential, really, because I'd only played a few games, as you know. So he said, listen, I've turned it down because I want you to stay here. OK, no problem. That's, that's good enough for me. I'll fight for the place. So then I, I, then he pulls me in again and, and I got a bit frustrated. And I'll tell you for the reason why I got frustrated now is because 
lads that are around my age now. So I came up with lads who played for England with um, Mark Robbins, uh, John Ebro, and uh, they were playing. John was playing at Everton, and Matt was playing in England in and out at United. And it, and again, in my opinion, no better than what I was. I'm thinking, well, why am I not playing here? So I remember getting frustrated and going into Aaron and said, look, I know you says about, you know, me, me, you know, you wanted to groom me and all the rest of it, blah, blah, and just to be patient. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these guys and everything, and, you know, I, I, I need to be playing. Um, and, and by that time, I think I was nearly, I'd have been nearly 20, I'd have been 20 then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So he said, look, I, you know, I, I, I want you to stay. I, he said, I've just turned on another 200 grand from Blackburn. Now, in between, as you know, I made, I, I went on loan to Blackburn. I was alone at Port Vale, done all right both times. Um, but they, as I said, they, they didn't want to let me go. So... I, I went into Howard and said, look, I, I, I want to go. I, I, I can't, I don't want to wait anymore. I want to go. So if you, I don't know if you remember, but um, so being in Manchester at the time, they used to do the Manchester Evening News, used to, they used to be the extra and it used to be in the afternoon and you get the, the, the main paper in the, um, later on. So literally I went to see Howard in the morning, the extra, the, it says uh, Beckford can go at a price, and he wanted the what the club would want. Club wanted four hundred grand for me, so uh, four hundred grand they wanted for me. And like I say, I, I, I you know I played a few, but I'd always been in and around it for quite a while. So for me, I thought that was a little bit harsh as well because I think Howard was a bit upset with me that I wasn't patient. So he knew that no one's going to come in and pay four hundred grand for me. And then, but then we, we made up, as it were, but then, in, and then he ended up going back to Everton, which, as I say, I know in a round, I know I've been, been a bit long-winded, but I would have, my career could have been so much different at City if it had stayed. And later on, you know, when I, you, you see people and I see, you know, H&E, when I see Peter Reid later on and stuff, and they remember saying to me, says, Howard always wished, he said it was a mistake that he, he, he made going back to Everton for that second time. He, he made a big mistake. Well, but I do good. really think we, 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 were, we could have really done something really. I think, like I say, those lads like the inches and whites and stuff like that. And uh, Lakey, the, you know, they, they were starting to gain some experience as well and some traction. I mean, Lakey was in and around the England squad. So, you know, we... You know, we would, but we're about to be a decent team, I think. Absolutely, absolutely agree. From a fan's point of view, there was a, a great bend of youth and experience, you say, and it was working well. And it, we've really, yeah. thought it was going to go places, but still, yeah, yeah. The, the missus came calling, as he says at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Jason, how would you look back on your time as a city player then? I know you might have covered that a little bit now, but if you had to sum yeah. up, how would you sum up your time at Man City? Listen, I, I was at, I was at City, man and boy. You know, I was at a City from when I was eleven years old, and I, until I got sold to Birmingham as a twenty-one year old, twenty-two year old for one hundred and fifty thousand. And you know, I, I I always have affection for it, for City now. I always have a, I had it for affection for them then because they always looked after me. It was always looked after me. Yeah, as a professional, you know, I look back in it and say, should I have played more games for City? One hundred percent you know, in, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, and I think I deserve to. But football's about opinions, isn't it? And managers and coaches can, they can, you know, they can make or break your career. I'm not saying my career is broke, you know, because I got, I just, I got a bad injury at Birmingham and I ended up having a finish and that's just what it was. But at least I had, you know, a, a, a good go at it because I knew a lot of kids, and, you know, don't get um, an opportunity any at all, but... No regrets for Man City. I say regrets. You know, yeah, I do I wish I should have played more and should I have played more? Yeah, I do believe that. If I were Kendall State, it would have been. But as I say, it's my hometown club. So I, I would always have affection for my hometown club. And uh, you know what? I, I always wish City well. Always, always. What's your opinion of the modern day Man City? And what players do you enjoy watching the most? Uh, Me, I mean... <laughs> Well, first of all, I wouldn't mind playing on that pitch. I mean, Jesus, it's like a it's like a bowling green, isn't it? Um, so that makes things nice for you. But um, but yeah, I mean, I mean they're so fluid in terms of the way they play, and Guardiola's come with that. 
philosophy of how he wants to play and and he's been able to get the players to be able to help him to be able to fulfill that philosophy as well. You know, the likes of De Bruyne, I mean, um, David Silva, I mean, those kind of, they're, they're, they're proper players, aren't they? And, you know, Yaya Toure when he was there as, as well. Um, I mean, you forget how long Sergio Aguero has been there as well. I mean, you know, he's obviously the record goal scorer for City now. So, you know, the, the, those players, you know, for me, always stand out. And, and so much, and pretty much now, all over the last four years, <coughs> Fernandinho, and I kind of feel as though he's a, an unsung hero. The reason why I say that is, obviously, having become a coach over the years and doing what I do, um, he, everybody, know, he's a good footballer. And, and, and I, I say this to people about sometimes about knowing your role within a team. And could, you know, could um, Fernandino play a bit further forward and, and, you know, go get forward and get beyond midfield players and go and score goals? I think he could because he has that ability. But he, he, he's, his responsibility in there was, as I call it, just, he, he sits back there and just minds the shot. If like and let's the likes of De Bruyne and Silva when he was there and all let them go and play because you always need someone just to you know be able to make sure that they're uh, that there's always that security in mind and uh, and I think you know you used to watch a lot more City than I but when he doesn't play City you know they, they, they've been different I know he's not played for a, you know he's probably not played for a bit now but he he was a real a real important cog in that wheel when uh, when City were really doing well. I mean, they start to do well again now, haven't they? But I really do think he was an important cog in the wheel. But great team to watch, um, you know. And, and you know what? You say to a lot, I know there's a lot of fans probably, you may well say that. I know a lot of the City fans that watched when when we were playing, you know, they do say, you know, some of these people forget, you know, there was a, there was, there was a City, there, there was a club before all this came about. But you know what? I say fill your boots and enjoy it while it's here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Fill your boots and enjoy it while it's here because you, <laughs> you know what you know what life's like. You know it, it can change in a heartbeat, can't it? So it certainly you can. Know what? Jay, I've got some questions that I want a one answer only from. If I can, yeah. Here we go. So Tony Book or Glyn Pardo? Oh, that's that's not fair. That no, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. I'm I'm gonna go both. <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne or Paul Lake? <laughs> I'm killing you. You're killing me, aren't you? <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna go both. It sounds bad. Oh, I'll dodge a second one. <laughs> you, you, you're out of all because they're different, aren't they? Different. Play- well, listen. Let me tell you this. Go going forward, De Bruyne defending Lakey. All day. That's that. That that. I think that's fair. You spent seven years sat on there. Um, <laughs> worst dressed city teammate during your time there. Now Quinn. The biggest moaner at the club during your time. Or uh, Gary Megson. Funniest city teammate. <laughs> Neil McNabb. Oh, sorry. Uh, can I say two? Yeah. Neil McNabb and Adrian Heath. So who wins this 100-metre race, David White or Jason Beckford? David White. Phil well, Foden. you don't run 100 metres in a game. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Foden or Lionel Messi? You've got to sign one. I've got to sign one now? Yeah. Phil Foden, I'd sign him now. Champions League win or Premier League title? Champions League. True or false? Paul Lake once had a sky blue Ford Escort. <laughs> True, I was in it. True. <laughs> I knew how I knew that. <laughs> anyway. uh, a couple of favourites, Jason. Favourite away ground for you? Uh, Anfield. Favourite city teammate? Uh, Neil McNa Neil Lakey. Favorite kit? Um, the maroon one. Favorite manager? I know now the answer to that. Yeah, our Kendall. 
And as a favourite, say, a non-playing staff member, someone who worked in and around the club. Oh. <laughs> um, um, I know people may have said it. Well, two people, really. The, the groundsman, Stan, Gibson, uh, Stan Gibson, you may remember him. Yeah. But um, there was an old fella that used to be around the place who used to do the kit that we called Jimmy Rouse. So uh, Rousey was funny. So he, he, an old fella, just an old fella used to do the kit and everything, but he used to... <laughs> <laughs> he used to just moan all the time. Sorry, but I'm giggling to myself here. You probably think, what's he laughing at? Here? Just Rousey, just, he used to just walk around and go, excuse me, Frenchie, he just go, set of cunts these lot, just a set of cunts. <laughs> Where's that come from? <laughs> excuse me, French. No, no, that's fine. So what's your favourite city memory? If you had to pull one out of the bag. Um, comes to mind. Favourite city memory? Uh, hmm. I, do you know what? I think what, what, one of my favourites is making my debut at, at home um, with my best mate, Lakey. And, you know, we had a good we had a good game that day. And, again, it's, again, a shame we didn't get to ch play more together. Um, so that... That was, you know, we, we, against Bradford. You know, we had a good day that day. Bits of sweet in the end because he got a, he got one of his injuries that day. He got a bad tackle from a guy called Mark Hazelhurst, don't you? I don't know if you yeah. remember him, but yeah. dirty bastard. Mm. But, um, but yeah, so that was one of my, my favourite memories. And and also, um, actually playing for England, playing for England at Main Road. I played for England for the under-18 England youth at Main Road. Um, I think we played Sweden. And, you know, actually playing playing there for England at my home, uh, my home ground. Um, and, you know, people coming out to watch as well. Was, um, yeah, well, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was good. That was good. So, um, yeah. Pandemic okay. aside, what's Jason Beckford of 2021 up to? Ha. Huh. Um, well, just a well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I work for myself now as an independent coach, um, coach and player development um, consultant in Canada. So I am um, a lot of these uh, community clubs here. I, I, I go and support them around coach education um, and, and, and player development as well. So I've, I've been here for nine years now and I've been able to, you know, probably carve out a career for myself here. Um, having, you know, worked for the FA back home, you know, you know, um, delivering courses, you know, around level ones, level twos, and was about to do level threes. And then we started, you know, level threes being UA for Bs, and then I obviously came to Canada. So um, that's what I'm doing these days. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy enough doing what we're doing. Um, I'm, and and I've, again, just so that, you know, people understand is that, you know, I, I, I love football and football's given me everything. I mean, I mean even, even to this day, you know, the fact of me being at Man City and I'm playing and playing when I did and all the rest of it, you know, it still holds a lot of stock, you know, this side of the world. So it, it's, it's enabled me to be able to say, carve out a career for myself in football and I've, and I've always been able to, I've always been involved in football all my life. So... Um, I, I am appreciative of the game and, and what the game's been able to give me. Jason, it's been a real pleasure to talk City and share your tales of blue. Thank you for your time and I wish you all the very best, mate. Thank you as well, Mark. I appreciate it, mate. And like I say, all the best to all you City fans and uh, I'm not wish nothing but the best for, for everyone at Man City.